Hello, welcome to another Vidahost video tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at FTP. FTP is the way that we're going to get files onto and off of the server that we set up with Vidahost. We're going to be looking at HTML files, that's going to be a static site that we're going to assume you have already created. I'm going to be using my Mac for this tutorial, but equally anything we do applies to Windows or a different FTP client. I'm going to be using Cyberduck, my favourite FTP client for the Mac, we're just going to boot it up and we're going to go open connection. Right, this is the backbone of any FTP. All you need to know is your server, your username and your password. Your server will probably be whatever domain you signed up with. So my domain with fiberhost.com. However, for the benefit of this tutorial, I set this up a dummy account and I've got my server address here, my username and my password. So I'm just going to copy that in. I'm using an IP address. Now you don't need to worry about this too much if you're a basic user. This is just the IP address, the direct route to the server. So I'm going to paste that in, you're going to paste in myserver.com or whatever domain you signed up with. I'm then going to put in my username and my password. Right, one thing to point out is the port. Port here is 21. This is a default FTP port. It's the full port that Vidahost use is the port that the majority of web servers use. However, if you're not with Vidahost and you're looking to figure out how to use FTP very basically, you're going to have to find out that port number and just make sure it's 21. It probably is. It will say in the welcome email. So, and then we're going to hit connect. And we're presented with a series of folders. Excellent. Right. Vidahost, unlike other servers, well, some other servers, presents you with the widest possible access to your account. So right here, we're in the root of our account, as we can see by a single forward slash. Um, this is a shared hosting account, so there will be other accounts on the server, but as far as we're concerned, this is our root. We've got various folders. Most of them are fairly self-explanatory. We've got access logs, mail, public FTP, public HTML, temp, and triple W. Right. I'm just going to head over now to Firefox and I'm going to paste in that server, that's a Vidahost server, and the account I've created. Now this, for instance, would just be www.yoursite. Now what you'll notice is there's nothing there. All we've got is a CGI bin and the parent directory. Obviously the parent directory is a Vidahost server, so we just want to ignore that because that's nothing to do with us. Right. Now I'm going to have a look here. What do we see? A load of folders. Now why you ask, is that not the same? Well that's not the same because we've got public HTML. Public HTML is the area where all the public HTML files appear. So if we have a look in here, CGI bin, CGI bin. What a coincidence. Right, we're going to leap back to www. Now this here is a shortcut to this folder. See, it's exactly the same. Now why is that there and that there, you ask? Well, the reason for that is that some users might not want to have public HTML. They might want to have several folders in here, and they might want folder 7 to be the public HTML. Now, Videhost can set that up for you. You just have to ask them. Go to support. You can raise a query with them, and they'll be more than happy to help. But for the meantime, we can click on either and go to the site. Now, in true video tutorial fashion, here is some content I created earlier. What we've got here is an index.html file, a file with all the images for the site, and a little JavaScript file. This is to display the Twitter feed that I've just got on this very basic splash page. Now, I don't want you to worry too much about this. It really is up to you what you put in your server, and I'm not going to walk you through just yet how to create your own web page. If you are a complete novice and want to get information up there, there are various programs available to you. Microsoft Word will give you the option to save an HTML file. Dreamweaver, there are various others. It's fairly straightforward to get to grips with. Your best bet is to hit Google and say, how do I create an HTML file? There's lots of advice out there. Anyway, we've got some already, so we're just going to drag and drop. Now, as we can see, the transfer windows appear. That's showing us our transfer. Some other clients, though, they might have this already built in or elsewhere. All that's showing, I'm going to shut this now, is that these files have now transferred. So, we're going to go back to Firefox, hit refresh, Look at that. Basic splash page with a link to all my different sites and my Twitter status with that little JavaScript file. Fantastic. Right. Back to Cyberduck. A couple of other things are worth running over. Why is it called an index.html file? Now, it might seem obvious that index is an index of a book, and that's why it's called index, but equally, the server doesn't really understand if you called it primary. If you called it primary and we hit refresh, 
we're back to that little directory with all the files. Now you really don't want this because number one, it confuses your users when they go to your domain, and number two, you maybe don't want them seeing all of the files you've got hidden in the back end here. This would be quite bad, um, especially if you've got sort of sensitive data, if you've got username and passwords, you really shouldn't have that there, but if you did, you don't really want them to be able to browse your complete site directory. So, if we call it index.htm, or even HTML, like we had it before, either of them, when we go to the website, the server will recognize that as a primary page, and it'll go to this hello page up here. Fantastic. A couple of other things to point out, maybe if you're doing some more advanced coding, you're using PHP, XML, various other extensions, all applies. Make sure it's called index, and that will go straight to the site. Now, there are a couple of other very basic problems you might have. For instance, let's say you've got a little JavaScript file. You might find it's not working. Now, what you have to be really careful here is permissions. I've just gone to info, however, it might be attributes, so watch that. If you're having issues, make sure it's set to the right permissions here. Read, write, execute. Most websites will be able to run off 774. Most won't need to write and execute, especially a static site. However, we're just going to leave it like that for the time being. There's no point in messing around with that. But if you are having problems with a specific blog software, WordPress, for instance, often has problems with these permissions not being set up right. However, when we do those tutorials later, we will go over it. So don't worry just yet. Uh, a couple of other things probably to go over. Uh, public FTP. Let's say you wanted to share the FTP data. So instead of going to your site and going HH HTTP, you went to FTP, you can do that completely blank at the moment on account of it being completely blank with no files here. So, there you go. That's a very basic introduction to uh, FTP. Um, if there's any other problems, any other suggestions, any other video tutorials you might want, give us a bell and let us know. There'll be more video tutorials coming in the next few weeks.